Hello and welcome to today's LO Esports Roundup where we're going to cover Worlds 2022 Group Stage Day 1. Down in the description you'll see three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there. Discord, join us. We BS about the games when they go on. Um, getting a little toxic with Worlds starting, but we're going to probably write that tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I'm going to write that tomorrow. And then today, um, YouTube memberships, $3 supports me, $10 will uh, support me even further. Um, $3, you uh, get a badge in the comment section. $10, you get the badge in the comment section, plus you get extra content, including a video that will go out after this one. I will go over today's tonight's games, preview tomorrow's schedule, and then that members only video will be me predicting who I think is gonna win these games. Um, I'm 27 and 13, I went three and three today. I wrong, right, wrong right right wrong so yeah three and three so i'm 27 and 13 um but that'll be extra content as well as um nfl american football content i'll have a video going out tomorrow where i do my uh predictions for winners of those games against the spread and over under so now onto the games for today um i just thought about it for a second but when i was getting prepared i'm like if i was going to describe how each major region felt after this game after today how how would you describe it well nobody is overly happy um honestly i would say everybody is kind of meh and north america is sad if i had to guess um so c9 and fanatic um, Fnatic come out strong with some play and buff, uh, C9, uh, bad read, bad draft, terrible draft, actually. I, I didn't understand today. There was not a lot of Maokai action. Um, a lot of giving Maokai and I mean, blue side giving Maokai to red side or banning it themselves. And it's like, what are you doing? This champ is so OP right now. Triple flex, like w w what the hell? It just boggled my mind. Um, C9 blind picks um, Gen, uh, LeBlanc or LeBlanc or Fear. I forget which one was blind picked, but both in the last rotation. And it just made absolutely no sense. Just a draft that made really no sense. Fnatic wins. Humanoid 5, 2, and 4, 34% of damage. Upset 8, 0, and 5 at 80 carry. Jensen 2, 1, and 2, 33% of C9's damage. Berserker 0, 1, and 3. It was just completely missing the boat on draft um you know i'm gonna grant most of these world's teams that are playing play-in teams a little bit of a, a buffer for some of their issues um if it's meta related or it's just being rusty in general um i can't extend it to some and not all that would make me ignorant but um i think that it uh could have went a lot better could have went a lot better for C9. Missing the draft was was not was something within their control, pretty much. Especially the Maokai part. It just Sejuani first pick is just not. I I'm really not a fan of Sejuani at all. Um, as a, as a league fan watching and watching all these games, I'm just not a fan of Sej. I think Sej stinks. I um, I mean, if you're on red side and you're picking it into Maokai or something because Maokai is gone. I mean, that's one thing, but first picking says just makes no sense. Um, G2 and Damwon. Damwon blow out G2. G2 missed the boat today. Um, Seraphine mid. We had rumors that there were support mids going around LPL scrims. Maybe G2 were part of those scrims, and um, that's where the Seraphine mid came from. Played Caitlyn Luck spot lane, got blown off well, blown out, sorry. Um, Duck Dom playing Jin, not all that great, but Dom Wan's Nugari and top lane on the Camille dominated, going 3, 2, and 8, 28% of damage. Showmaker, 8, 0, oh, and 4 in mid. Flack at 5, 3, and 2 on that. Caitlyn for G2, 29% of damage. Broken Blade, 2, 3, 2 on the Orn. G2 just missed, completely swung and missed, and this comes off of swinging and missing at LAC Finals. Obviously, like I said, we got to give some teams a break day one, figuring out what they want to do. Um, we'll see more teams tomorrow. Uh, the LPL teams today, the three that went, did not pick really um, all that supportive of mids. But uh, it looks like TES might have been the team that was playing some supportive mid action. If you look at um, Knights, 
uh, Champions Q and Solo Kill Champion Pools that he's been playing with. But other than that, I mean, it just didn't work. And the thing is with G2, you can't put all your eggs in the Flacket basket. Flacket is not your best player. It is Caps, and uh, they, they completely missed. Uh, upset CFO over 100 Thieves, at least I consider an upset, a minor region over a major region. Um, mission 119, 38% of damage. Shun 10, 0, and 1 at 80 carry. Um, FBI 2, 4, and 4, 31% of damage for 100 Thieves. Abadage 3, 2, and 1. Another game where we saw an early Sejuani pick for absolutely no reason. It was just, it just boggles my mind. Fiora top. Someday, I mean, come on, man, this really isn't isn't going to work. I know that into Aatrox is oftentimes used as a skill matchup counter, but let's be real. We need to be a little more realistic. Um, and the thing is, Closer is probably the best player on the team. So putting Closer on Sejuani sucks. At least it feels, I mean, when I see it, it sucks. It's like, what are you doing? Um, this is your best player. You cannot put him on Sej if you want to win this game. Um the Viego for Gemini was really good. I believe he played Viego. Um, it's hard to overlook Kanavi's Viego, which we'll get into. But um, CFO just won outright. There's one outright. 100 Thieves are definitely the weakest Western team. I'm hoping that they can now split against CFO. I went in my predictions yesterday. I mean, I'd be pretty embarrassed if I lost and 100 Thieves lost. And did not lose in a good way. They lost in a bad way. So um, not a lot really nice to say about that one. JDG and EG, um, there are some positives to come out of this for EG. Um, JDG, they're the only LPL team that won today. And frankly, um, they could have lost. They could have lost. Um, so, Kanavi, 12-1-9, 29% of damage for Vie on a Viego for JDG. Yagao. 4, 2, and 13 in mid. Impact, 3, 6, 7, 31% of damage on a GP for EG. And Kauri, 5, 3, and 5 on Varus. So what am I talking about? Well, Vulcan tried to do his Hillisang um, cosplay and did it well. Starting at level 1 and getting killed level 1. Um, then would die a couple more times during the early game on Tom Kench. As Kauri is like 3, 0, 0 in bot lane and actually getting an edge over Hope. Like, really, in all honesty, I mean, they got a 2v2 kill, so really the EG bot lane won the 2v2. Um, this was an opportunity because 369 was on Sejuani in top lane, and they dove impact a couple times. Impact ended up in a hole, but he ended up in actually having an impact on the game. Um, they were in a good position with Drake's, but they fought three times in the mid to late game without impact around or without impact on the same page. He TPs late to the fight three times and they lose all three fights 4v5. And that's that's what lost them the game. So, you know, a lot closer than a lot of people expected it to be. I'm actually pretty happy with how Kauri did in bot lane. Um, I mean, I didn't expect I, I think I have EG06 in this group, or 1 and 5, so, um, I mean, that's a thing, right? I'm not, you know, on the copium with EG, but this is actually better than I thought they would do. I thought JEG would, would actually blow him out. Um, Inspire tried his best to keep up with Kanavi, but once Kanavi got going, he got the kills early and just kind of went from there. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, but um, JEG are the... LP, well, actually, they're not the only LPL team that won. Why did I just mix up? I don't know why I said that. I just said that earlier. Some of you try to correct me when I clearly have it on the damn board. Like, of course, I, I misspoke. T1 and EDG after. Um, this was this was a, a big one. This is a big one. Um, and it's not because they won, but the matter in which they won. This was the biggest blowout of the day. And going into it, you would argue, looking at this board, that it might be the closest game. Because you got the four seed versus the one seed, right? Gen G considered by many, including myself, world's favorites, best team in the world. And then you have T1 and EDG, second and third in their, or, or you know, um, yeah, second and third in their regions. Like, this is going to be a contested, really close matchup. T1 blew them out. 23-minute win. Zayas, 4-1-7, and 26% of damage on a Fiora top lane. He picked it blind? 
think he did pick it blind. Yes, he did, because Flandre would answer with an orn and end up in a hole. Caria, 1-0-17 on a Yumi. They played Yumi bot lane. Yumi is going to be your win rate champion because Tom Kench was 5-0 going into this day, and now it's 5-1. Um, Scout, 2-1-1, 32% of damage for EDG. Viper, 3-4-2 in bot lane. EDG just got smoked. Absolutely smoked. Faker Zakali was nasty as well. Owner was nasty. T1 were really, really good. Like, it was like, oh, oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. Now, we're extending it to everybody. Did EG, EDG, they haven't played in a while. Got some rust to knock off. Maybe they got a bad read. We'll see the second time around. We'll see when they have to play C9 or, yeah, C9 tomorrow if they, um, you know, right the ship and, and win decisively. Not just win, but win decisively. But um, this was concerning if you are an LPL fan. But... As an LCK, as a T1 fan specifically, you have to be really happy about this. And, on a, I mean, if if Zayas can just run with a Fiora top lane the way he played today, nobody is stopping T1. Um, RNG and Genji to finish us off. We don't have the damage stats here. The game just ended up trying to get the video out. Gala, 6-1-3 and three for RNG on an Aphelios. Way, 4-1-7 and seven on a Graves. Chovy, 2-1-1 one and one in the loss on an Azir. And Lahens. Oh, three and three on a singed. So RNG win. This is a draft gap. Um, so Gen G decided to go to four or five with their bot lane. Okay. Um, they picked singed, pick five. But what did they pick with the singe? Well, they picked Senna bot with singe. So we haven't seen much Senna at all. I don't think any Senna at this tournament. And this was the first Senna game we see, and it's with Lahenza singed. And throughout this whole entire process it's like the singed is nasty and it is against yumi his singe is very good it's a good counter but a, a fasting senna singed lane put all the power out of ruler and put it into lahens and chovy and chovy did what he could but he couldn't do it all and lahens couldn't 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 win he couldn't do it it was it was not it was not good at all it was very bad breathe did very well against Doran and top lane. They took a couple trips top lane, gave Doran some trouble. Um, I will say, uh, RNG took a lot of trips mid lane, putting Chovy in a weird spot. To put in perspective, two and a half minutes in, both Ruler and Chovy's flashes had been blown. So, like, RNG were really, really feeling it. This is that play and buff I'm talking about. I'm going to give Gen G a break, just like I gave C9. Um, you're playing against teams that are, you know, feeling it. They, they, they're in a good spot. They've been playing stage games on the patch. They're feeling good where you're against teams that clearly miss the boat like Gen G playing Senna singed bot lane. That did not work at, at all. Um, even Poppy jungled. No one's playing Poppy. Po I love Poppy. No one's playing it, Peanut. Sorry. I know you're really good at it, but it's not a thing anymore. You, you got to move on. You got to move on. Um, we'll see how they do. They don't play tomorrow, but... We'll see what they do after this. Now, sneak peek tomorrow. Um, Rogue and DRX will open the day up. Uh, never have played against each other before. Larson versus Zekka is what I want to watch. That is the matchup to see. Why is that? Well, do you really care about Odo Kingen? Not really. Malrung, Pioshik, or Juhan? No. Comp and Deft is a good matchup. Two top 10 players. I mean... Yeah, um, bot lane, Trimby, and Barrel. I mean, it could get spicy down there. Trimby and Barrel could pick some weird stuff. But Zekka has been nasty for DRX throughout play-ins. Best player, arguably, in play-ins outright. So, as far as I'm concerned, Larson has to stop him. Larson, very good laner in the LEC, was my first pick as LEC All Pro. Um, so, Larson versus Zekka is the matchup to watch for me. EG and G2, EG trying to not go 0-7 against G2, G2 not tra trying to start 0-2 in the tournament, right? They both coming off the losses here, and uh, G2's was uglier than EG's. They played, like I said, at MSI 2022, in Rumble stage, G2 would go 2-0. This comes after they went 4-0 against EG in groups. Um, Yankos 5-2-9 and in the first game, Flacket 6-0-2 in the second game, um, Based on how I saw today, this is a different EG. Um, you know, I, I'm i warming up to Kauri as more games go along here. Um, I still think the Danny situation is super unfortunate. Um, excuse me, but uh, 
They're getting a little better by the day, but if Vulcan ints, Vulcan ints, and they'll lose. Um, I wrote it down here because I forgot there and I wasn't going to erase this. JoJo Pune and Caps is what I want to watch. Um, I mean, that mid lane matchup, see if JoJo can stack up. Caps did not look good today on the Seraphine, but Seraphine is not something you want Caps on. Um, and JoJo was in a, 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 a control mage matchup against Yagao, and I got to say, um, that is not the way to handle that. So, um, we'll see how it goes tomorrow between those two. Uh, I mean, neither team looked good today. So, one is going to get on the right track. Fnatic and T1, Worlds 2019 was the last time they played. T1 would win the first time in groups. Faker, 9-0 and 8. Bwipo would help them win. Would help Fnatic win the second game. 7-2 uh, and 11. Jojo, Pune, and Caps. Oh, what the hell? I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. Upset and Guma is what I want to watch. 280 carries. Um, even after watching... Well, honestly, maybe Humanoid and... I wrote the players down. I prepared this before these games were all done. Mistake. I hadn't done it throughout all of play-ins. And I did it today to try and get ahead. And, uh, well... Um, honestly, Humanoid and Faker might be a better matchup than Upset and uh, Guma. Guma played his role for T1, but was kind of very secondary... Ter territory or whatever third tier like carry but humanoid and akali uh humanoid to kali fakers akali that's gonna be an interesting matchup both players are feeling themselves right now at a high level of play um so that's the matchup to watch um in addition to what is wonder gonna do what is wonder gonna do against this is not fudge's fiora this is zayas's fiora um it'll be interesting EDG and C9. Um, EDG trying to right the ship. C9 trying to get a win. Um, last time they played was Worlds 2017. If you recall, that was the year that C9, EDG, and T1 were in groups together. Jensen would go 6-2-4 and four the first time they played in, in the win. So Jensen 6-2-4 and four against Scout. Clear Love, throwback name, right? Went 7-2-13 and 13 for EDG the second time they played. Flandre versus uh, Fudge is what I want to watch. Oh, why did I write? Good God Almighty! You can tell when I wrote that. Why would? Why else would I have Flandre and Zeus up there? I am off my rocker. Wow. Wow. I C nine wishes right. This is why you know that these videos aren't edited. Um. Oh Jesus. Well. Hmm. Scout looked okay. I mean, I'm going to put Fudge here because, I mean, I'm not erasing Flandre. I really don't know. Like, EDG sucked today. Like, the way they got blown out. What positive things can EDG take from today? And what positive things can C9 really take? Sven stole a couple of Berserker's kills. Kind of screwed everything up, to be honest with you. Because C9 was kind of active in the early game. And if those two kills, that thousand gold goes to Berserker instead of Sven, maybe the game's a little different. Um, so, EDG and C9, um, C9 has their work cut out for them, pretty much. Uh, Top and Gam Esports never have played against each other. This is uh, two seed from LPL against one seed from Vietnam. Um, Tian and Levi is what we want to watch. So, Tian, in many eyes, the best jungler in the world. In my opinion, I have him second behind um, Kanavi. But nevertheless, Tian is cracked, right? So we all, a lot of people know Tian, but not a lot of people know Levi, right? If you don't pay attention to minor regions or you're not a longtime fan of League of Legends, um, Levi has been one of the better players in Vietnam for a long time. Um, had a stint in the LCS, never really was able to make it, um, and went back to Vietnam and continues to dominate. Has a lot of weird and different picks. Um, this team was extremely cracked in spring, but chose to go to the Southeastern Asia Games in well, Southeastern Asia games, yes, SEC games, right? Yeah, um, and went there instead of MSI, which sent Saigon Buffalo, the second seed from the BCS, to MSI. Um, and Gam would just completely run over everybody at that tournament, like Malaysia's team, Thailand's team, and this and that, like a bunch of players we don't know, right? Um, but the fact is, this team has like real pop-off potential i think it has to be respected it is not like cfo it is it is better than cfo so 
that game is a trap game as far as I'm concerned for top. Um, Vietnamese teams, I've, I've heard many rumors throughout the whole process, even towards the end of the regular split, that Vietnamese teams were scrimming JDG and other top LPL teams and being competitive, taking games off them in scrims. If that is the case, this is a real game here. This is not, this is not a joke. Um, DK and, uh, JDG finish us off. Um, both coming off of wins. Dom won very decisive. JDG not so much. Last time they played was Worlds 2020 in groups. Showmaker 6, 0, and 11 on a Twisted Fate, I believe. And then Zoom would go 12, 6, and 6 for JDG on a Camille, I think. Um, Canyon versus Kanavi. Both want to play carries. All of a sudden, this carry meta is coming in here. We saw a lot of Graves and Viego today. Um, if that happens, I'm giving the edge to Kanavi, but you cannot, cannot disrespect Canyon in a carry meta. I... I had Canyon in the um, off season between spring and summer as my number one rated jungler, personally, in my opinion, going into summer. That has changed. I have a Kanavi, Tian, and um, Sadra, and I'm, I'll update that, I guess, in December sometime or, or late November. Um, but the point is, this meta is, is very good for those two players, and I think that right now, the way that Damwon looked, JDG cannot play the way they did today. If they play the way they did today, Dom Juan's going to crush them. They looked so dominant today. Um, and Canyon versus Kanavi is an elite matchup we have to follow. Just like Inspired Kanavi today, you have to respect really, really, really talented players in the same role against each other. And um, I know New Green 369 is a nice matchup to think about, but I think it is still in the jungle between Kanavi and his opponent. That is something to really watch. So thank you for watching this video. Like the video, if you like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube member, and thank you for watching.